Oh my oh. god! Oh my god! It worked. Oh. Now it works. Now it works. Huh? Oh we literally. Just Were you guys talking recording. about me? We just. Were you talking bad about me? Joining. Because you tried to join with three separate devices, didn't work. And then we were talking about the Buffalo meeting and how I won the uh, hatchet throwing tournament. Of course you were talking about that. <laughs> well, you'll have to watch the pod to see if we were talking crap. I will. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. No, I'm going to edit oh, that Talking part, bad. Right? Talking bad. <laughs> oh, God. That was the most stressful 10 minutes of my life. Sorry, guys. I'm here. That's all right. We were just talking about our 2024. Olivia, how's your 2024 been going? Oh, it's going great. I'm excited. I think it's going to be a really good year. Me too. I have that feeling. Yeah. Um, also, I, I just wanted to do a couple housekeeping items. Number one, the in-person meetup happening at Southern Press Juicery. I think it's official. Is it official now? Have we picked the dates yet? It's official. Yet? I signed the contract. Did we pick the dates yet? Yeah. What is, oh, where please. are they? <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited. So in May, we're going to be doing an in-person crash course at Starting Your Own Juice Bar at Southern Press Juicery. Um, we'll be splitting the days up. We'll be doing half-day classroom style, half-day hands-on in the actual juice bar. We're going to close it down for half the day. And you'll be getting hands-on training, making juice, making acai bowls, making smoothies, serving customers, using a POS system, everything. Everything. Um, it's going to be awesome. Back of house, front of house, customer service, marketing. It's all going to be included in this two-day course. Keep an eye out on your email. It's been happening in May. I think on a Wednesday and Thursday. Can't remember what days. <laughs> I'm searching. I'm searching so fast. We'll let anyway, you know when it, I find it, it. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're finalizing pricing. We have to see what our costs are for everything. And we'll send out the date soon. But keep an eye out for that. Space will be very limited. Since our first one, we don't want to like have too many people there and everything be crazy. So keep an eye out. It will be invaluable. It's priceless, but there will be a price. <laughs> I don't know what that price is yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, it should be awesome. The first type of training event like this we've done. Juice kind of had some training, but this is like structured crash course, two days, yep. fully hands-on curriculum. Superstar yep. instructors. I think I'm even going to teach a little bit. I don't know what yet. <gasps> oh, nice. Hey, maybe we can do a live <laughs> pod from there, Charlie. Didn't we talk about that? Maybe That'd we can do too, a live yeah. pod and do like questions and feature some people. Yeah, we'll we'll try to figure it out. I I thought I was going to do a live podcast from JuiceCon one year, but then mm -hmm. it was just way too much going on. And I just canceled mm. it because I'm like, yeah. I can't imagine with everything that's going on, all the people there sitting down and focusing on a podcast for an hour. It's like. It's yeah. kind of, there's so much other stuff going on with planning an event. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, may, maybe we'll do something. Um, we'll do like a Q and a maybe after we're done with the course, we can talk to people and talk about <clears> what they learned. Yeah. And there's a lot, cool. of, a lot of options. May 9th yeah. and 10th. May 9th and 10th, everybody. <laughs> there it is. 2024. It's coming right up. Yes, in my home. Well, not my, my new hometown. I'm not from here, but I guess it's my hometown now. Greenville hometown is awesome. Area. Charlie, I mean, Ari, you've been to Greenville. Charlie, you never have. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a really yet. special town. Yeah. It's a Thursday, Friday. The Thursday, Friday, May 9th and 10th. Can have. I will be there. Sh yep. Chef Ari in the back, Olivia in the front, Charlie on the bar. It's going to be Throwing awesome. Throwing hatchets. Right. Throwing hatchets. <laughs> I, my aim is pretty good. I could probably take that out was a smoothie insane, cup from across Charlie. the juice bar. <laughs> that was insane. And you know who else was insane, I will say, on the team? Was Paige. Was she? Mm. Oh, my God. She was I, in my group. I, she was I think a killer. The thing was, our engineer, our redheaded engineer, Spencer, he was, uh, he was, he was the guy that was really like I was kind of concerned about. Yeah. Like when we were doing the warm up round, him and I yeah. were neck for neck. We were only off by like one point or something. Mm -hmm. But then he lost his first round of the tournament, got taken out by Lindsay mm -hmm. Connell. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah, our, she our, snuck our friend in there. Lindsay came down from Canada for the event. Uh, that was fun. That was awesome. I think she posted some photos for anyone that follows her. 
I'll tell you, a lot of your Buffalo people look like they could have done really well in that hatchet contest. But luckily, oh, a lot I of had flannel. A lot of people were was in a flannel. Lot of, <laughs> a lot of beards, a lot of flannel, a lot of beer. Oh, yeah. And um, luckily, I had Eric Wetlofer and not Charlie because <laughs> Eric had quite true, a yeah. few axes come back towards our toes. So I was I was glad I wasn't on Charlie yeah, going against Charlie. Axes axes don't seem to be his strong point, <laughs> but, but it was fun. I don't know, just came natural to me. What can I say? Yeah, maybe beginner's luck. Maybe next time I'll just miss every every throw. Maybe. <laughs> um. So. Yes, and we also, we've been working on, I know we talked about, a few weeks ago, we talked about this juicing level up subscription we're going to be doing. We've been narrowing it down, we've been dialing it, and we've been working on the technology of how we're going to do it. Yeah. Uh, we're not prepared to officially announce details, but I can tell you, it will be weekly meetings yeah. with the Dream Team. With the three of us, sometimes it'll be two of us, sometimes it might be one right. of us, but just in general, every week, an hour of time with the Dream Team, uh, you can join. It'll be Google Meet call, so we'll right. present some educational material and then have open discussion for anyone that's part of the subscription plan. And that will be, uh, so you basically get four hours a month of calls with us for less than the price of an hour of consulting. So I think it's a great deal. And uh, thousands of dollars of value. And I think the price might be, what do we say, $300 a month? So so you're getting yeah. like, if you were to pay for consulting with each of us for an hour every week, it'd be thousands of dollars a month. And you're getting it for the price of one hour of consulting. And uh, it'll be cool. We'll present a new topic every week. You can also ask questions about something completely different if you're struggling something with your, in your business. We can answer your questions. The other people on the call can answer your questions. You'll meet some other good friends that are also going through the process of opening a juice bar of special mm -hmm. guests on. You can kind of consider it like what we do here on the podcast. It'll be more of a yeah. community um, support group type environment. Right. So I think there'll be a lot of value out of it. We'll make some friends. Yeah. We'll build some relationships. And we can get real in depth on topics, you know, like troubleshooting specific options. Yeah. A lot of times <laughs> we come up with solutions for operations. It, doesn't always work across the board. So you could present more information and get a more specialized answer specific to you. So, yeah. And I want to say this carefully as to not hurt anybody's feelings, but it's as much as I love the good nature Facebook group, a lot of times there's questions that are asked there and then People try to help and answer questions, but the answers and the suggestions that other people are giving out aren't always what we right. would advise. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think, yeah. So that's going to be like so any think, online yeah. forum, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, we're all have a different level of expertise and different things have worked for different people. But what I like about the juicing level up program is that you'll have direct access to us to ask us questions. And we can say, we've seen this work in this circumstance, this work in this circumstance that never works. Don't do that. And, and it'll actually give you an opportunity. You know, we try to keep up with the Facebook group, but there's so many people in there now and so many questions and we're busy in our, you know, in our work and our consulting. So this is going to be a really awesome chance to raise your hand and be like, Ari, when I juice this, <laughs> what's happening yeah. or Olivia, yeah. you know, should I price it at this? Like actually get information from the experts. And also I'm sure there's a lot that we can learn and about other markets and cool exactly. things that you guys I, are doing. I think, I think that's the most yeah. compelling part about it is the support group dynamic. Absolutely. So it's that's what everybody loves about you. juice con. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the fun part. That is the fun part. I, I think that's the most valuable part is the, Networking, meeting people, like lots of people that we've brought together at JuiceCon have formed lifelong relationships and they visit each other's juice bars and talk regularly. So I think there'll be a big component of that too, which I'm excited about. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. That's coming soon. Uh, we were trying to launch it in January. It didn't happen, but um, we're getting really close. Right. Just some, it becomes complicated. We're like, hey, let's do this thing. And they're like, all right, well, how are we going to do the video calls? Okay, mm -hmm. well, how are we... Going to record them. How are we going to make sure the only people coming on the calls are people that are paying for right. the subscription? There's like so right. many technical details, and we've got it all figured out now. So 
I'm excited about that. Um, and then if you're part of the subscription and you can't be on the call, you'll have seven days to access the video afterwards also. Yeah. So that's cool too. All right. Moving on. Uh, let's get started. Friday. This week I did it my way. I made lots of juice and now I feel a boost. Baby say, oh, it's the way I make my juice. Press in fruits and roots. This week I did it my way. Baby say, oh, now let's have some fun. There is nothing greater than Friday's act of nature. Ow, 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 ow. What's up, my ju juice lovers? Welcome to Good Nature Radio. This is your host, Charlie Wetlawfer, joined by the two top juice business consultants in the world, Chef Ari Sexner, author of The Juicing Companion, <laughs> literally wrote the book on how to create your own juice recipes, and of course, the one and only Olivia Esquivel, founder and operator of Southern Press ju 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 Juicery, bow, 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 the award-winning juice smoothie and acai bowl shop. Good Nature Radio is a weekly Friday podcast where the juice industry comes together to help with starting and growing your juice business. Good Nature was founded in 1976 by my dad when he invented the commercial cold press juicer. Interested in learning about a complete turnkey packages for starting a juice business? Schedule a 30-minute call with the Dream Team. Like your own private podcast, head over to goodnature.com slash radio. Just fill out the quick little form there and we'll reach out to schedule a call. And of course... Use code GN Radio on the Good Nature School of Juice for hundred dollars off any course. Learn.goodnature.com. Join in on the discussion on the Good Nature Juicing Facebook group. Up to over five thousand members. Just search for Good Nature Juicing on Facebook and shop in bulk for glass bottles and ingredients and supplies on the Good Nature Marketplace. Goodnature.com. We've got a great episode today. We're going to be talking about naming. A juice bar and juices and trademarks and recipes mm. and copyrights, some legal stuff. I took it off the agenda when Olivia wasn't on the call, but I'm adding it back on. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> then Ari wanted to touch on uh, using powdered supplements and shots and juices. And there's Ooh. some discussion with that, I think, just today in the Facebook group. Mm. Um, and then also, if we have time, we can get a little bit into Valentine's Day specials. I yeah. want to talk about that a little bit too. So, first of all, um, naming, coming up with a name, a unique name, mm. a good name. Mm -hmm. Then, because I saw people asking about like filing a trademark and protecting all that, I want to talk a bit right. about that. I actually have a ton of experience <clears throat> in that. You remember, at good nature. Then also protecting recipes. We can touch on that. So, first of all, Olivia. You know, through our consulting work, we've been helping a ton of companies rebrand. A lot of them end up changing the names after mm -hmm. they speak with you and our team. So we can talk a little bit about how you work with people on finding a truly unique name that resonates with customers. Yeah. So some people come to us with no name at all. And, um, you know, sometimes to me, that's almost the easiest. You would think that would be the hardest, but the more and more you talk to people that are like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I would name it. You know, you start to sort of take a personality test and inevitably, you know, some one or two words comes out and it'll always be like, this feels dumb, but I've been thinking about this, right? This particular ingredient or this particular word or whatever. And um, I always say like, it's okay if you don't know what you want it to be. Just let us take, uh, you know, take a deep dive into your goals for the business, where you want to take it, what kind of operation is it going to be? What is your menu? What do you sort of think for your menu that you're going to work on Chef Ari with? Um, and from there, we can really start to throw some stuff on the wall and see what sticks. And it's one thing to have an idea. It's another thing to watch um, our designers really bring it to life. And I always say, like, just give me an idea. Let us breathe life into it. And when we do you'll know right away if it's right or if it's wrong. I haven't gotten it wrong yet, I will say. 
because most of the time they have an idea, like they really know they're just a little insecure about it and they just need to see it in real time. They need to see what it would look like on a sign. What would it look like on a bottle, right? It's hard for them to, to creatively like see what that would look like in real life. Um, so, so that's always actually easier. What's hard sometimes is when people want to change something that they already have. Um, they come because they know what they have maybe is limiting or it's not working or it's not sending the right message, but sometimes they get emotionally attached, becomes like a, a baby of theirs. And, you know, that's hard. It, it is hard when you have some sort of market brand recognition and then you're wanting to change it. So I like to do what we call, um, you know, sort of a, a brand refresh, almost like a facelift where we can take some component of what was there before and what was working, what we feel is a strong component, and then sort of just you know, take it to the next level, take it from a mom and pop look to a really elevated um, professional experience. Think about the customer experience from the moment they are introduced to that brand, whether it's a brick and mortar or, or a juice delivery truck or a drop off at your at your home, the interaction they have with that brand, what what it looks like when they're walking away, how they remember it, um, what the food tastes like, all of that really needs to work together. So it really ends up being a, um, a really fun discussion to see the things that, that they are thinking about and then allowing us to breathe life into it is really the most fun part. Yeah, it is fun. Branding's fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it's like digging in, identifying what that person really cares about mm -hmm. and right. bringing that out, right. Developing a unique name. Um, I mean, we see so many names that are like, mm. have to do with fresh juice or mm -hmm. like roots or vegetables mm -hmm. or, um, puns with the word, you know, juicing puns and like mm -hmm. the names I really love are the really unique ones that mm -hmm. don't have the word pressed in it or juice or roots or fresh. They're pretty or, far like, out there. The ones yeah. that are like, those are real cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so much um, different now, you know, like when I started Southern Press Juicery, Pressed, which you just named every, other than Southern, you just said you hated Pressed and Juicery, so I appreciate that. <laughs> but I've stood the test of time nonetheless, Charlie. Um, but back then, you know, I opened in 2015 on, on the East Coast, really, juice hadn't become quite the thing like it had on the West Coast. So you know, I really needed, I felt like at that time to explain what the concept was. And I think that, that, um, you know, due to the growth of the concept and to all the work good nature puts in and us helping all of these juice bars really get on the map and, and be able to survive and, and thrive. Um, it, you don't have to do so much explaining anymore. You don't have to say like, welcome to juicebar.com. You know, right. like you can really kind of have fun with the brand now and it doesn't have to be so literal um and 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 still be really successful because i think people now know what good green juice is what juices all over the world um it's just come such a long way even since i've opened you know close to 10 years ago now so it's it's different branding it now than it was back then yeah that's a that's a really good point um like back then being a juice bar was a super unique right Right. novel idea right like it, right like when press juicery started mm -hmm. they were one of the first like hey we make cold pressed juice they were one of the right. first so putting it in their name totally made sense you know and you right. you started how long ago 2015, 2015. Mm -hmm. yeah so nine years ago mm -hmm. um before juicing was a big deal yeah that totally makes sense yeah but then these days it's probably better to be a little bit more unique yeah yeah, so and for anyone mentioned... that's like thinking, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I think you mentioned the last pod that, you know, Press Juicery changed their name now to Pressed. They dropped the oh, juicery, yeah. you know, as, as, the, as the menu has changed and as they sort of after COVID developed these new little 600 square foot pop-up places and they're doing a lot more of just that freeze that they call it. Um, you know, it's been interesting to see them sort of develop that brand from what used to be just juice to now this extension of menu items. Um, right. So to your point, you can you can drop the juicery if you need to. <laughs> yeah. And drop the word raw if it's not raw. Right. 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 <laughs> like that, that company raw juicery. It goes with the logo, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really nice. It's cool to see the the major brands out there, yeah. how they kind of 
all evolve and kind of follow the same suit of like, you know, really vibrant colors to really simplistic designs. And it's crazy to see some of those places just copy each other <laughs> or, or kind of yeah. find the trend somehow and, and just be able to kind of adjust everything and becomes a household type thing. You know, it's awesome to see. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if anyone's trying to think up a, a name now, I would really recommend digging deep, just picking something that means a lot to you. It doesn't have to do with juice or food, like just something that people will remember, you know, and something right. that would be unique. Logo right. too. Yeah. Logo's logo. Big. Yeah. I... Yeah. Don't use a cup of the straw. Don't use a slice of orange. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Let's. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So then I saw some discussion on the Facebook group. People asked Mala, do you, did you trademark your juice bar name? Mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. it worth it? And uh, so there's something to understand about trademarks. So there's a couple different kinds. Well, a few different kinds. The two you're going to be concerned with is either a word mark, which is trademarking the actual name, or a logo mark, which is trademarking the logo. So, And you can have a logo mark without trademarking the name because you're just trying to protect the actual logo itself. And you can trademark... I believe the word mark's a little harder to get because actually you're saying nobody can even use this word in this space, right? Like we have a word mark, trademark on the name Good Nature in the commercial juicing space. So if any other company were to pop up named Good Nature, we could say, hey, you can't do that. Um, So that's the first thing uh, is that there's a difference between word mark and logo mark. Secondly, I would say to file a trademark, you probably could do it on your own, but I think it's a lot easier to use a lawyer. Uh, You're going to end up spending hundreds or thousands of dollars. Um, there's a bit of trademark research they have to do to see if they even think it's protectable. Then once they say, yeah, you could probably do this, then you have to file it in the right classes. And then it goes to an examiner. Then the examiner might come back and say, well, I'm concerned about this because there's this other company over here that's in the similar place. And you might have to go back and forth. Like it can end up being a big long process and take like a year or so. Um, and then finally, if you do get a trademark, be honest with yourself. Are you going to actually defend it? So if your little uh, Western press juicery in California and you see somebody pop up in Texas with the same name, are you really going to sue them? Mm-hmm. Like, are you going to send them a cease and desist letter? Are you going to pursue right. it? Are you going to really try to get them to stop? Or do you really care that much? I would say... If you're a single location juice bar or juice delivery company, it's probably not even worth worrying about. I mean, unless you're actually going to defend it. Like you have the money and you have lawyers and stuff. And if you really care that much about it, that would be my advice. Now, if you're going to franchise. Right. I was going to say, unless you plan on doing multiple units. Yeah. If you're going to be a national brand, then I would 100% say, It's important to get a trademark. First of all, the research will help you understand if you even have a unique name or protectable name Mm -hmm. um, that you can even trademark. Like you might think you came up with this amazing name, you know, fresh, fresh juicery. (laughs) And you're so concerned about protecting it because somebody else will surely copy it. And then you find out there's seven other fresh juiceries. (laughs) Right. Right? Um, Right. So that's the first step. Um, Yeah. Uh, So I guess that's my advice. Think about, is it really unique? Are you going to actually defend it if somebody else uses it? Is it just a local juice bar or are you going to be a national brand? And like, the only reason someone would really copy you is if you have a really well-known developed brand that they think is going to bring bring them business. Like, if you're Suja Juice, of course you want to protect it because you don't want some little juice bar popping up in Ohio called Suja that's selling mm-hmm. like juice with your name on it, you know, because that would take away from your market. Um, all right. Um, and then, sorry, go ahead, Eric. I, I got a question on that. I, I don't know. How would this work if you owned a juice bar, you named it, and then uh, three or four years down the road, someone opens up that same name juice bar and then they go and copyright it and yes. then come after that, you. So, that happened. That happened to one of my clients. Yeah. And, and it was nasty. So, 
I would say exactly what Charlie is saying, like, unless you're going to go after it. But the other thing to consider is doing at least a search to see if anybody else has it already yes. trademarked. That's just as valuable, if not more valuable, because if somebody already has it trademarked, yeah. then I would say, you know, I, I would make a change in the name. I would make some sort of change that would be significant enough for them to not be able to defend it. Because I had a client that was a juice bar. I don't remember the States, but let's, let's say they were in Wisconsin and another juice bar by the same name in like Maine. Well, they had the same, they had the same name and the girl in Maine went after the girl in Wisconsin and cease and desist letters wouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. Poor girl had to hire a lawyer $50,000 later. And even her lawyer said, look, you guys are in different States. Nobody is going to try to order her juice in Wisconsin and there be a conflict of like, oh, I thought I was getting the lady in Maine, which is the whole point of, right? The, the point is, is that you're not trying to pass off your product as somebody else's product when that money should have gone to the other person, that you're not trying to basically confuse the consumer right. on who That's you are. That's the term they use, likelihood of confusion. Yes, right. Likelihood of confusion. So if your name is Suja mm -hmm. and then somebody else launches a bicycle brand named Suja, Right. And Suja Juice sues them and says, you can't use the name Suja. They could not prove likelihood of confusion so that right. bike company would be able to exist. Right. But if but it's two juice companies, say, then, yeah. Yeah. Or if it's two juice companies, or let's say it's a uh, something similar, like maybe it's a kombucha company and it's, you know, thought about right. as, a, beverage, as a healthy drink, yeah. a beverage industry. It's in, you know, pouring rights, whatever. And it's maybe spelled C U uh, S U J J A. Right. It's like, mm, were you really trying to to poach Suja's market and confuse the consumer, right? Like that, that's so, more of a discussion. Yeah, is it going to end up for sale in the same place, and is the person right. going to be confused like, as to who they're buying which from? One? Right. So you guys both would kind of recommend getting that copyrighted, just or for not the even of okay. someone else. Right. Go ahead, Charlie. First of all, it's trademark, not copyright. We can get trademark. in the difference on that too. Um, yeah. But also, you can do your own research too. USPTO. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has a website. They actually just recently updated. The search is really nice and easy to use now. Um, just like Google USPTO trademark search, and you'll find the search. Type in the name. Okay, say here's all the trademarks. These ones are alive. These ones are dead. And they belong. There's different classes. There's a bunch of classes of trademarks. So like class 007 might be uh, juice and beverages and tea, right? I think like mm -hmm. juice and tea are in the same class. Um, so if someone has your word mark in a different class, then you might still be able to use it and might still even be able to trademark it as long as it's not in the same class. So that's something else you should look at. So don't get freaked out if you see that somebody has your name in a different industry. That's totally fine. And Olivia, you said your client, they were a juice bar in one state. Yeah. And what was it, a juice, juice bar in another state? And a juice bar in just, another state. And and really... It's just her, a local juice bar? It was just a local juice bar. And so the lawyer, um, you know, of the second place said, well, you know, she had a good case. She would have been fine. But the first girl wouldn't leave her alone and just kept on and kept on. So she actually changed the name of her juice bar, changed the name of her Instagram, changed oh everything. And the girl still kept coming after her. It was crazy. It's almost like she wanted to close. And I'm like, okay, well, that's just a bad egg, right? Or bad apple. Like that's just a bad, one bad experience. Also, what world. a waste of time and energy and what money. What a waste. It's just like, bad Like why energy. are you coming after this girl? That's right. not, not in even your in the market. same state. Right. That's it's just... supposed to be a feel good industry about helping people move forward. That's what we're about at Good Nature is just helping yeah. everybody move forward. There's no secret of recipes. Uh, you know, I mean, anyways, but to answer your question, Ari, I'm not saying, I don't think we're saying that you should necessarily trademark. I am trademarked, but rather what we're saying is before you settle on a name and a brand, you should do a trademark search to make sure that the name that you want to yeah. use isn't already trademarked. Before and also, you by the way, yeah. And also, our, to answer our question, if you start your company and then later somebody uh -huh. starts and trademarks it, right. you are still allowed to keep using your name because you're there first. Yes. You were there first. They, right? they, they, they can't retroactively come after you Correct. and say that you're, you're trying to cause consumer confusion because you existed right. first. There's also th some things that you can't go after somebody for. Like if they're using their actual name as the name right. of their business or something, that's allowed.
you can't tell somebody you can't use the name Ari Sexner as your juice bar because that's your actual given name. I, I have come across that actually. Right? <laughs> no, no, not Ari, but a juice bar I did work with. Yeah. They were getting sued because they used uh, someone's name and it was the uh, same name as another juice bar. Wow. I don't, yeah. Take down a corporation, you know, don't worry about yeah, yeah. small standalone places. It's, it's ridiculous. That's really ridiculous. Um, the lawyers love it, you know, because they get to f- yeah. charge you fees up up the wazoo, and it just drags on for months and months and months. Um, yeah, so likely out of confusion. Like I have another anecdotal anecdotal story. Anecdotal story. Anecdotal. There's another juice company that started under a name. They're in California. They're a juice bar selling raw juice in California, and this. Milk, bottled milk company, sent them a letter, said, hey, we have a trademark on this name. Went back and forth, and they agreed, as long as you're only selling raw juice direct to customer, we'll allow you to keep using it. Because we don't care about that. We sell through grocery stores. As long as your stuff doesn't end up in grocery stores, then we're okay. And they agreed. But then five years later, the juice company decided they wanted to go wholesale. And they had to completely change their whole brand to do that. And lose all that brand equity. Um, mm. That was really Ouch. temporarily detrimental to the company. Like sales really dropped off for a while. But yeah, I could see that. I think they're doing better now. But that's something else you need to think about. I mean, mm-hmm. we, Good Nature, got a letter from a company that sells uh, tea bags called Good Nature, mm-hmm. like bag tea, and we had to agree with them that we won't. We would agree not to sell tea products and they agree not to sell juice products. We just came to an agreement, mm-hmm. you know, and that was mm. kind of the thing. So you, you can make these, uh, forget what they call them. I don't know if it's, it's not a settlement. It, it's something else like a coexist, coexisting mm-hmm. relationship agreement or something. Um, the trademarks as well. I mean, good, the good nature name drives us crazy because, uh, First of all, <laughs> yeah, we don't need to get it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> One of the most popular good nature names is this company that makes rat traps, good nature rat <laughs> traps. And people are always like sending us customer service requests for the broken rat trap. And then, <laughs> and then a new one that popped up in the last few years is this good nature where you donate your poo for money. Okay. Okay. Your- I just saw this last night. I just saw this last night, Charlie. And I was going to say something and I was like, I don't want to hurt his feelings. I'm not going to even tell them. Oh, no. We you are need. well aware of this. We, oh, my God. We get people contact me. I was like, hey, where can I drop <laughs> off my my poop? <laughs> Do you tell and them your brother's like, office? You're like, uh, Eric, what lover's office? Like, like, <laughs> like, we have such a strong brand. We pop up as one of the top three results for people looking for where they can donate their poop, you know? So it's like. Oh, my like God. They search, they search yeah. good, good Nature Donation Center, and we're the third result on Google. So <laughs> it's good that oh the check said so just send it out, you know? <laughs> right. Oh my God. That's Man. classic. How ironic, how yeah. ironic that I saw that last night. Cause I was, I was on my iPad and I was trying to get to the good nature site and I just put it in Google cause I was too lazy to, to type it all in at the top. And I was like, what? And, I, and then, you know, I thought it was like one of those where, you know, Big Brother is listening, yeah. and it just like gives you. Then I started like going down a rat hole, and I was just like, "Oh, God, where's, where's oh this yeah." It's, and that's a new one that just popped up like a couple of years for the last couple of years. Yeah, um, well, it definitely popped. And up there's for nothing me. we can do about it. Yeah, wow. You know, and the thing is, we we have the domain goodnature.com, which is a great domain. Yeah. So people <laughs> just confuse us for all those companies because we have the domain, you know. Um. So yeah, that's frustrating. But but again, it's like they're in different class of trademark in a different industry nobody's going to confuse us like there's not a likelihood of confusion that they think our juice machines are like poop donation poop machines, machines or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what happens right. after okay. you do a juice cleanse but right it, um, you, hey there could be a market there okay <laughs> but let's talk about this because this is something that i hear a lot that i'm pretty sure is not allowed but this is on chef Ari's side so i'm gonna throw it to him but you are not legally allowed to trademark a recipe, a recipe right? Okay. Go ahead, yes. Charlie. Only I, I think this is a copyright. Or copyright. Copyright, not trademark. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll let Ari take it first, okay. and then I'll correct him. 
What is wrong? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know about the legality of it. I do know you're not allowed to do that with a recipe. Right. Okay. Do so that. a recipe. He, he said do that because he didn't want to say the wrong Because I didn't want to say copyright or trademark. <laughs> I didn't want to get corrected again. You know? so smart. Yeah. I mean, so, so a copyright is like a – is how you protect a creative work. So mm -hmm. like um, if you write a paragraph, a text or a book, mm -hmm. or you take a photograph or you paint a picture, that's a copyright, R-I-G-H-T, mm -hmm. which is different than copywriting, W-R-I-T-I-N-G, right. which is the act of like writing stuff. But a copyright is how you protect, protect creative works, a song, a picture, whatever, a trademark is uh, more like trade names and things you use in business. So that's the difference. So if you're going to file anything on a recipe, it'd probably be a copyright, but mm -hmm. you cannot copyright recipes. That's that right. is considered a tr trade secret. Mm -hmm. Like the Coca-Cola recipe is not protected. It mm -hmm. is a trade secret. Mm -hmm. If you were to talk to somebody who works there and they gave you the trade secret, they could get sued for giving you confidential information, but it's not like a legally protected piece of intellectual property. Um, so yeah, uh, recipes are trade secrets, but yeah. people always get bent out of shape. Oh my God, they're using my recipe. Well, yeah. it's just a recipe. You know, mm -hmm. chances are they probably just came up with it on their own. <laughs> yeah. um, especially something like juice. I mean, you're literally just mixing fruits and vegetables. Like yeah. there's only so many right. combinations, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people. Recipe, I, don't try. Yeah, yeah, you can't. But but people, you know, and that was honestly when I came to the Juice Con in Miami. That was one of the things that I you set the tone on the stage, Charlie, in the very first opening of Juice Con. And my husband looked at me and was like, "Man, this is such a good community." Because the first thing Charlie said when he got up there is, "This we are not in competition with each other. We are here to." share information to learn from one another there are, there are no secrets here and and that's how i've really i mean i'll never forget you saying that and and i felt like it changed the vibe in the room immediately and all mm. of a sudden people were willing to ask questions they were willing to answer questions you know mm. oh olivia how do you do the recipe on this or chef what how do i do this and it was just like this i don't know it, and sometimes that's such a natural feeling of like You've built something, you've worked so hard, you've poured your heart and soul into it, and you just want to protect it and keep it close to you. But really, the growth is in sharing and learning and, and sharing with one another. And so that's part of what Good Nature does and what the Facebook group does. And, you know, there's people using Ari's recipes all over the world. There's people, if you took my masterclass lessons, there's people using, you know, my acai bowl recipes. If you come and, and practice at Southern Press Juicery as part of consulting, I mean, you're going to see my recipes. And, and I feel that way, even just as a juice bar owner, like I can't tell you how many times somebody will come in and say, that was the best smoothie I've ever had. I can't come every week. Can you teach me how to make that? And I'll open the recipe book and I'll say, here, take a picture of it. You know, mm. I, I'm never afraid that they're not going to come to me. Never. It, because you can't always make yourself a smoothie and sometimes you don't even want to, you know? So it's, it's a treat to have somebody make something for you. I'm not saying you should print out your recipes to everybody on the internet, but just collectively as we share information, that's one of the things I love about this community and the one that good nature has set up is that we're here to learn from one another. And um, you don't have to be so afraid to protect everything that you've worked at because there's ways that we can make it better, make it smarter, make it cheaper, make more money on it you know, and right. just move it all forward. And when it comes down to it, the specific recipes mm. are not the most important thing. It's right. Yeah. It's your brand and your customer service mm. and your social media. Yeah. And like anybody can make a sweet green juice. It's not your specific sweet green right. juice that is like right. going to make you succeed or fail. Right. Right. It's the business as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it definitely like I, I, get the feeling you know when people mm. are located so close to different juice bars they want to be protective of that uh right. but i mean the resources we have give you the ability to not feel like you're on that island and you can collaborate and reach out and network with all these different juice bars because i mean the questions we get we get consistently you know right. it's like everyone's 
everyone's going through a lot of the same situations yes. that could be easily yes. fixed. And so that's and, and of, Olivia, when you started your juice bar, you had mm-hmm. to just kind of figure everything out, right? Totally. Yeah, totally. I didn't have, like you, you know, didn't it, have, the, the reason. Yeah. No, oh, I didn't have, you know, I, I, maybe the Good Nature blog existed there. I, I'm not sure, but it was literally trial and error, trial and error, trial and error on, on smoothies, on bowls, on juices, on um, vegan food, on everything. And so, you know, it's so much easier now. I, I feel like the community that we've built and um, that we're fostering is just so much easier to ask somebody, where do you get a plastic bottle from? Where do you get a glass bottle from? Who designed your labels? You know, how do I increase the shelf life of, of a juice? You know, those things are just saving you so much time and money and energy to be able to have a community that is collaborative, that, um, you know, rising tide lifts all boats that we can share with one another um, rather than, you know, the old school way of before we had all of this, um, learning it the hard way. I mean, yeah, look how far juice bars have come in the last 10 years. And I think the biggest factor in that is the collaboration. Absolutely. Putting those recipes out there. Hmm. uh, I mean, people have a good foundation or base to look at those and develop even further, you know? Absolutely. All right. Um, First of all, I got chills while you're describing juice kind of just remembering the whole. uh, Oh, yeah. Like, like I was so nervous going on stage. I'm like, oh, you did great. I wrote this speech. I wrote this speech and rehearsed it about how we all have to work together and there's room for everyone to grow and how industry can grow. And I'm like, I didn't know how it was going to go over, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. but then it was just like so much positivity and so much support. It was a truly magical moment in my life, I think, giving that speech. Yeah. Just feeling the camaraderie in the room. And that was, that was, that was was an awesome moment. Yeah. It's incredible when you Um, can feel the actual energy change. Like that's a really cool thing. You know, when everybody's like, Oh good. I was hoping somebody would say that because (laughs) I have a million questions, you know? (laughs) I I think you're right. That's probably what it was. And everyone else wasn't sure. Like, is everyone else going to be super protective here and not want to talk about anything? Are we competing? Yeah, totally. Are we all competitors? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, that's awesome okay let's talk about valentine's day specials mm, yeah uh ari you're the one that asked to add this agenda but you can go first what's coming up and i'm huge in <laughs> valentine's day you know oh i love valentine's <laughs> day uh no i i think it's definitely uh i like to look at menus standard juice bar i think it's really important to run specials you know, mm-hmm. and the major categories are juices for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I'd say plant-based milks, if that's consistently what you're offering, you got the offer special with that and like a smoothie or smoothie bowl. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think a good format for operations when they run specials or seasonal items is just have one in each category. Yeah. You know, and I mean, Valentine's Day is definitely a huge seller. Uh, anything pink. Mm-hmm. Red or that kind of hue is a huge seller. Uh, beats like Heartbeat, mm-hmm. always, always popular. I definitely like uh, incorporating rose water in a lot mm-hmm. of stuff. Don't overdo it. Be very mm-hmm. careful with that. You know, that stuff. Yeah. Uh, your juice can go from tasting really nice with a hint of rose to yeah. tasting like perfume very yes. easily. Very floral, but, yeah. Rose water is great. It's it's natural, it, and make sure you get a natural one. And it's great for hydration. They they consume it a lot in the Middle East. Uh, incorporate uh, raspberries if you can are real popular for Valentine's Day, or certain berries. Uh, that's probably more in the the smoothie aspect. Mm-hmm. You can incorporate a little bit in in juices a little bit to get that nice color and a hint of flavor. Uh, also nut milks, you can go ahead or plant-based milks, you can get dehydrated or powdered forms of that, that work Mm -hmm. really well to get a unique twist on that. Um, chocolate and berries is always popular. Those Mm -hmm. can be incorporated as well in those formats too. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things, um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that I've seen work really well in my juice bar. Um, we started doing one one of the one of the associates really pushed me to do a beet bowl 
And I was like, no way. This thing is going to flop so bad. And it actually ended up being a top seller. I only bring it back for Valentine's Day, but it is a beet cool. bowl. And one of the things that we do to bring in the color is we juice the beet juice and then we freeze it in um, molds. Like we, we have donut shaped molds. We freeze it in molds. And then when we're incorporating that into the base, we use that as the frozen component. So um, like, let's say it was a coconut milk base, and then maybe we add three or four frozen beet um, donuts, I call them, that's what I call them. Um, and so then it's, you know, maybe mixed with a banana or something to get the consistency, but that gives you a nice, bright, deep red beet mm. color bowl. And then I think we did, um, we did some Brazil nut crumble, but one thing that was really yummy was we did a vegan, um, a vegan uh, cream treat, cream cheese. Uh, God, that was tough. A vegan That's a cream tough one. cheese. Yeah. yeah. Um, drizzle on top, which was really nice. So it, it was drizzled oh, cool. with white. It was really pretty. Um, chocolate covered strawberries always go well for me. Um, I do a raspberry chocolate smoothie. That's my favorite. Um, and like one thing I started doing, um, today that I encouraged them to do was we do some raw vegan donuts. I said, you know, this doesn't have to be hard. Take the recipe you already have, dip it into a glaze and then dip it into, you know, like chef some dehydrated pataya or strawberries or something like that, mm -hmm. just to give it a little bit of color. And then outside of that, always be looking for other ways to bring in money. Like, you know, I, I'm going to be buying wholesale flowers and putting together a little bouquets that, you know, maybe will cost me 10 or 12 bucks. I'll sell them for 25, 30. So those will not, they'll be nice. They'll have a nice little Southern Press Juice Free stamp and craft paper around them. It's just a nice little add on um, to be able to sell that. Um, and then, um, okay, we did this one thing. We did this one thing for several years. I'm getting too old. I don't have the energy to do it anymore, but we did speed dating for Valentine's Day at Southern Press Juice Free. <laughs> really? Oh my God, you guys, it was okay. The only feeling I hate in my entire life is awkwardness. I hate awkwardness. It just makes my skin crawl. And it was, my husband set it up to be the most awkward thing ever, but it was, <laughs> we, we did it for like four years and it was sold out every single year sold out. I mean, we probably had 25, 30 people, girls, and then 25, 30 guys. And I would have wow. to match them at the end. And my husband, we, you know, we would do the juices and the champagne and all that and chocolate covered strawberries. And my husband, every time he was a DJ and he would play like the most classically love songs from the nineties, like boys to men, take your clothes off on the floor, like that kind of stuff nice. during speed dating. And these are my regulars and I'm watching them all intermingle. But I mean, it was a hoot. So, you know, doing fun things like that, maybe doing a Galentine's dinner or something for the girls to get together, a flower making class is always fun, but try to mm. think outside the box. I know that sales are slow in this time period. So any little place where you can have some sort of engagement, something new, fun and exciting um, that, you know, that people can do and maybe put an extra 10, 15 bucks in your pocket for every single um, add on that you do. So just kind of be thinking outside the box also. It's funny you mentioned that that beet bowl because uh, some of the original recipes for red velvet cake, yeah, actually were the using beets for the. Oh color. really? Yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, so beets um, were great. So I... Olivia, you just talking about yeah. speed dating reminded me of something. I yeah, I was in a uh, local restaurant out here in Austin, uh -huh. and I saw these people playing mahjong. You know the. Yeah, the one Chinese of my friends game plays tiles. that. Yeah. Well, I went over and talked to them. It's this whole like m women's meetup group. Yeah. It's like, it's. I guess it started in New York. I guess all the uh, old Jewish ladies play this American mahjong. So it's like Chinese, only the rules are a little bit modified. Yeah. And it's becoming this new thing. And there's these groups forming yeah. over the country where they get together and play mahjong and gossip. And it's sort of like how old ladies get together and knit. Only this right. is young, like professional women getting together to play mahjong. I just thought it was right. such a cool thing because I used to play that game when I studied in China. Um, but unfortunately, it's just all women. So it'd be awkward if I showed up. But <laughs> it looks fun. <laughs> yeah. Any little thing like that. And that's funny. Yeah. Literally, one of my best friends, I texted her. I'm like, where are you? She's like, oh, I'm at a lake, a, a retreat. And I was like, what kind of retreat? And she says, a mahjong retreat. She so had rented really? a lake house and it was just all those like, 
six or eight moms, you know, and they were just, I'm sure they weren't drinking yeah. green juice, but they were playing Mahjong and drinking something. And uh, I was <laughs> yeah. like, I've never even heard of this, you know? Yeah. But there's this group here in Austin. They basically, you can hire them to come do Mahjong events at your That's place of cool. business and stuff. And it looked like a That'd lot of fun. That'd be a great a really, thing to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just another idea. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Stuff like that. You, you know, yoga. I would always try to offer things that are free or very low cost. You know, I used to do free yoga every Thursday night, maybe just be a, be a, a meetup place and maybe just cover enough to, to cover your staff of whoever's going to work that night. You know, maybe it's a $2 buy-in or something like that. And, and right. always offer a sale on your juice cooler afterwards. I mean, you want to get it's sales you wouldn't have had before anyways. And um, you want to just get your product in people's hands. So don't worry about getting full price for it. Just give them an incentive for coming out and um, just start building the community that way. Yeah, that's a great idea. Cool. All right. Well, with that, everybody, um, have a great February. Have a great Valentine's Day. And uh, see you next week. So now I feel a boost. Baby, say, oh, it's the way I make my juice. Press in fruits and roots. This week I did it my way. Baby, say, oh, now let's have some fun. There is nothing greater than Friday's 